Now we're here at the TV station and we're with Herb Herb. And give us your name on the phone. And uh, you're going to talk about your son's case today. And I'm the private detective who worked on your son's case. And I filed a bar complaint with the Washington State Bar Association. And we need to get Jesse, Jesse Jones to do a story on this. And that's why we're doing this show. We're doing this show because we need to get Jesse Jones to pay attention to this and to help us get the CD transcribed so that the Bar Association can consider the hearing. And right now the Bar Association will not consider the hearing until the transcript of the hearing is transcribed. And you don't have any money to transcribe it. And I don't have any money to... Yeah, and I don't have any money to transcribe it. And, and tell me a little bit about what you said earlier today that your son hasn't been able to call you. He can call me correct. He can't call me with a need that I sent for him to be able to call. This thing is treasury because he was in prison seven years ago and they said that there were other phone numbers that they're allowing to have. And those, most of those phone numbers are not in existence. And, and tell us a little bit about uh, the prisoners that are being returned to the facility that your son's in. I don't know a lot about it. I understand that the prisoners that have been released, um, uh, what, about uh, four or five months ago, and that the prisoners are now being recalled and sent back, and I don't know about the reason why. I only know that what my son tells me that these guys are coming back in last numbers to serve a sentence that is. And, oh, and what's your son's name? Robert Scott Ingram. And Robert Scott Ingram is uh, right now, and where is he right now? Shelton. He's in Shelton. And the reason why I'm involved in the case, and the reason why I filed a bar complaint in this case, is because when the prosecutor did the charging documents, the woman who was listed as the owner of the vehicle, um, if you run the license plates on that vehicle, it shows two other people as registered owners of that vehicle. And that concerned me. And so I wrote a letter to the Bar Association and a letter to Mr. Young, who is the prosecutor, and told him to correct the record because the two individuals who were listed as registered owners weren't notified in the case. And it doesn't look like his victim is a real victim because it doesn't look like she is the only one that owns the vehicle. These two other people are listed as the registered owners and they live in Redmond and nobody has contacted them. And so that is the reason. One of them is supposed to be her boyfriend, I believe. Pardon? One of them is supposed to be, one of the registered owners is supposed to be her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend. No, the registered owners are people that live in Redmond. They have nothing to do with the woman that's listed on the charging papers as be being the owner. That woman who's listed on the charging papers did a bill of sale, but she's not listed on the char on the bill of sale on the registration for the state of Washington. She's not listed on the registration as being the owner of the vehicle. These two other people are listed as being the registered and legal owners of that vehicle. So it was up to the prosecutor's office to clarify the record and amend the charging documents because the charging documents as they stand on your son's case are inaccurate. And so that was my complaint to the bar. And I used the CD of the hearing of the transcript of the hearing when he was sentenced to prove my point because at that hearing when your son was sentenced the judge didn't seem to know what the prosecutor and I were talking about because the prosecutor, Mr. Young, had not served the documents on the prosecutor. Mr. Young responded in the record and filed a response to my bar complaint, but Mr. Young did not serve it like you're supposed to under the civil rules on the court, giving a copy to the working papers to the judge or on the opposing party. 
And so that was also inaccurate. And so I also included to the Bar Association that I thought Mr. Young, who is the prosecutor, was tampering with the record on appeal because Mr. Young and I were the only two people that knew Mr. Young had communicated and filed responses to my documents. And I was quite alarmed at that because under the civil rules and under the criminal rules, any time a person files anything in the court file, they are supposed to give copies to the court and to the opposing party. And it was only by luck that I went down to the courthouse and I noticed his response in the record. And then I responded to his response. And by doing that, and by bringing certified copies of those records with me on the day of your son's sentencing, that is the only reasons why those documents were admitted into the record at your son's sentencing. Otherwise, my document saying that there's an inconsistency in who owns the car and an inconsistency in the charging documents and there was an inconsistency in a violation of the court rules by Mr. Young filing documents that weren't properly before the court. And so when I handed the attorney for your son the certified copies and then Mr. Young intervened and looked at them and then the court said we haven't received those documents and I, I gave them to the court before when I filed them and then Mr. Young did not give them to the court when he responded to me and then when I handed them up to the court in certified copy form the court was allowed to accept them as a part of the record for your son's case. And that is one of the appeal issues on your son's case, that the prosecutors in your son's case that he is currently in jail for, the prosecutors misrepresented who owns the car on the charging papers. There needs to be clarity about who owns the car because it needs to be clarified what are the two people that are listed as registered owners on that car. And that is a very, very significant thing because the attorneys involved in the case had an obligation to communicate about that and to either amend the complaint against your son or dismiss the case. And that is the reason why it is currently on appeal. And that is the reason why it's very important to get Jesse Jones to have the transcript transcribed so that the Washington State Bar Association Board of Governors will have the transcript of that hearing before them when they rule on whether or not to take any action against Mr. Young on the bar complaint. So this is very, very important and this is the reason why it's nice that you are on the phone today for this TV show and it's nice that Mr. Herb Herb has us on the show because this is a very serious public interest issue that the prosecutors are not above the law either and that everybody follows the rules of ethics to practice law in the state of Washington and they also practice civil procedure. And my only complaint is, as a court-appointed individual, as an expert service involved in your son's case, my invoice was never submitted to the court to be paid, and the attorney involved in that case never submitted my credentials so that the court could approve that I was to be court-appointed on the case. And so your son appointed me on the case, then an attorney took over, and then I submitted my invoice and my invoice is just stagnant. Nobody has any legal authority to pay it because I've never been physically court appointed in the case. The judge knew I was court appointed. The prosecutor knew I was court appointed. Everybody knew I was court appointed. But in this particular case, you know, I haven't physically been court appointed. And I thought there were some very significant issues in this case to discuss. Now we're, we're gonna be joined by Will Wilson and um, this is a very significant case because of the fact that your son was convicted on a crime in which the woman who was listed as the victim, there's a dispute as to whether or not she owns the vehicle. 
And the prosecutor has a prior history with your son on a different case. And so there may be a conflict of interest because of that. And so I appreciate you coming here and being involved in this communication with us. And I appreciate this today. So I'm gonna let um, Will Wilson come in and I appreciate Will for coming. Hi, Will. And um, Will's gonna help us with this interview. Uh, Will is another producer. And it's very, very interesting to me and Will, your microphone's right over here. It's very interesting to me because what we're talking about today is the Bar Association not accepting a CD that is a hearing of a court that I got from a court report, uh, the clerk of the court. And the, the Bar Association is not going to consider that hearing until the he CD is transcribed. Now, I can't get that CD transcribed, but I'm hoping that Jesse Jones will get that CD transcribed. So thank you, Herb. Thank you very much for being here today and doing this show. This show is about getting Jesse Jones to pay attention to this case so that we can get him to transcribe the hearing and to maybe do a show on this as well. It's a very significant public issue.